is that pain? That's our first topic today. And how many times have you asked yourself, eh, is it just a stomach ache or something worse? About five or six months ago, I began to notice that my stomach was changing and that I was starting to have a lot of gas. I was bloated all the time and my stool consistency had changed. Also, I was slightly nauseous all the time. I'd wake up at night. I went and saw my doctor and he did a lot of basic tests. After four or five months of continuing symptoms, he's suggested that I get an endoscopy procedure. So one of the things that I suspected that it is that he might have this bacteria called H. pylori. So I've done three tests to try to prove it, and they've been inconclusive. So today, I'm going to do an endoscopy, go into his stomach, and see exactly what's going on. Okay. I'm about to insert the flexible endoscope into Ed's mouth. This is then going to go over the tongue and right into his esophagus. So we're going down, and notice that he has a big area in the esophagus. It looks like esophagitis, what might be a Barrett's stomach. Now we're in the stomach, right here. You can tell right off the bat, look how he has blood in the stomach. There's a small stomach ulcer right there. See those right there? A bleeding little ulcer. It looks like a red dot. Three more red dots, little tiny ulcers. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to get a sample, close. We're going to open. We're going to take a sample, close. And the endoscopy is now finished. We're going to take samples of Ed's stomach, and we're going to put that in this jelly. If there's bacteria, this jelly is going to react with the bacteria's proteins, and it's going to turn a blue color within 24 to 48 hours. Let's see if this is being caused by that bacteria, H. pylori. With us in studio are Ed and Dr. Jorge Rodriguez, a gastroenterologist who you saw in that clip. And let's cut to the chase. What's wrong with Ed? Uh, Ed has stomach ulcers. So he came in with a very sort of generalized complaints of abdominal discomfort that have been going on for a long time. So it could have been many things. I suspect that he had this bacteria called H. pylori. This bacteria burrows into the lining of the stomach and doesn't let you dissolve your food correctly. So mm -hmm. it starts wrong from the get-go and so it just we, starts fermenting. We know a lot more about ulcers now than when I went to medical oh, yeah, school. Yeah. We didn't realize that it was caused by a bacteria mm -hmm. or that it is caused by a bacteria. A big majority of them are caused by this bacteria and around 80% of the ulcers in the part under the stomach called the duodenum is caused by this bacteria. You did the study, was Ed positive for H. pylori or, I mean you have the ulcers regardless and you want those symptoms taken care of but it does affect treatment a little bit. Absolutely. Was he positive or? Well you know what, he had, uh, Ed's a confusing person. <laughs> so he had some confusing data. The majority of his tests for H. pylori, we did a breath test, which is the most sensitive and non-invasive, was negative. Uh, I did antibodies tests in his blood, which were borderline and slightly positive. Stool tests were negative, but the actual test of going in the stomach and getting a sample was negative. So I'm not going to treat him for H. pylori, even though I still suspect it. We're going to treat him for regular ulcers. So yeah. what are the other causes? Well, the main cause of ulcers is too much acid in the stomach, mm -hmm. and that can be caused by stress. You know, anything that's excitatory, I tell my patients, I try to make it rhyme, caffeine, nicotine, or being mean. You know, just very <laughs> stressed. The ults, you know, the acid goes up, mm -hmm. and it just settles in the stomach. Um, and I think that's why women probably have more ulcers than men, because the men are stressed in their <laughs> Are you seeing H. pylori being contagious, meaning other, other family members oh, get it? Oh, absolutely. There, there are estimates uh, that say that 40% of all Americans have H. pylori. And it tends to run in families. So that's super high. So, so a genetic component, once again. Maybe a genetic or component. Or just if somebody gets it, it's more it, they spread it to the rest of the spreading. family. Yeah. So let's talk really quickly. If, if so many of us are carrying around H. pylori, number one, obviously we don't all have ulcers. Right. So a lot of us, we're just carriers. It doesn't mean we have any symptoms. But for folks like Ed, what, what are our treatment options? And are there ways to avoid getting this bacteria? Right. The first thing is, if somebody in the family has the bacteria, you get it by person-to-person -person contact. So things as simple as kissing, using the same utensils, so you have to use proper hygiene and, and some common sense. Um, the treatment is the correct treatment for the disease. So Ed, I haven't proven H. pylori, even though I suspected. So we, we actually had a long discussion, and we're going to treat Ed with proton pump inhibitors for, for ulcers and see how that goes for a month. But the treatment for H. pylori is a two-week course of a combination of very strong antibiotics. And those proton pump inhibitors will decrease the acidity in his stomach, give 
that layer, that mucosal layer, a chance to heal. Absolutely. And you'd be happy with that, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. He might be feeling better already, you know? <laughs> yeah. And how likely is it that treatment's going to work? What's the prognosis for people with ulcers? Well, um, depends on the, on the cause of the ulcer. So if it's just excess acid, the prognosis is very good. Obviously, if you have an ulcer that doesn't heal, you got to suspect either something like H. pylori or a malignancy. Ed's ulcers did not appear malignant at all. They were small and tiny, so there was no, no concern about that. So if you're having the belching, the nausea, the vomiting, the weight loss, the fatigue, you know, bowel changes, then you should get to that. Yeah, absolutely. Get, get and the, the rule of thumb is if something doesn't go away after a prolonged period of time, I mean, go see your doctor about that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rodriguez, thank you. Ed, thank you as well. Best of luck with your symptoms.